Today, we're going to go on the Fool's Journey in the Tarot. We take the path, we're going to go through each one of the Arcana. Let's see how this turns out. So I have here the whole Fool's Journey, each one. We're going to go through them one by one. So we begin with the Fool, and as Frank Herbert said, Beginnings are a delicate time. The Fool is all about beginnings. The Fool can represent us in the world, and um, our journey through the world. You begin as a child, you have the faith of a child, and the innocence of a child. And you begin on your adventure. Hopefully you know, you'll make some mistakes and hopefully you'll learn from those mistakes. The Fool in Tarot represents you and it represents your beginnings. Next we have the Magician. As the Fool goes on his journey he meets the Magician. The Magician is a teacher you know, he's like the first, that first teacher you meet in school that really means something to you. That um, could be could be your father figure, but it doesn't have to be. Um, but mainly just that first teacher. Um, and if you uh, like, if you are watching Star Wars, the magician is you know, Obi Wan Kenobi, Luke's. No, um, yeah, Obi Wan Kenobi, Luke's teacher, and you know, the first guy he meets. Luke is the fool. I'm not saying Luke is a fool, but he's in the Arcana. He's the, the person that's going on the journey. And his first person he meets, Obi-Wan Kenobi, would be like the magician as he's going on through his journey. So when you are using the tarot cards as a dealing, this is somebody who's teaching you. Uh, the student, the teacher will come when the student is ready, that type of stuff. So next we have the High Priestess. This could be the mother, but it's more of like the mother is in Mother Nature. Because one thing we forgot about the wizard is the wizard can represent magic. When you meet the wizard as a the fool, you are still able to believe in magic. And the Empress is, since it represents Mother Nature and it can kind of represent Earth, and being grounded. It's the balance that brings you to Earth. You know, the, if, the, if the magician represents magic, then the priestess is, you know, Mother Earth being grounded and almost, you know, a little bit of that losing that belief in magic that you can as a child as you're going on your journey. Now we have the Empress, and the Empress is the mother. It is like representing your actual mother, not necessarily Mother Earth, but the Empress is the one that cares for you and loves you and provides for you. It is, it is the mother. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to do with the balancing like the priest, the High Priestess. It's more about the one who cares for you. It's not necessarily about practicality the High Priestess, just the nurturing mother. The Emperor, the father figure, the actual earthly father, the magician is a teacher, you know, of magic ways, Obi-Wan Kenobi, but the Emperor is the father, and if you want to compare to Obi-Wan Kenobi, then the Emperor is Darth Vader. Um, but, you know, in a real waking sense, most of us don't, thankfully, don't have that type of a father. So, just the more normal father. And, um, some people could say the emperor of your country. Uh, you know, Trump. Um, for whatever your, you know, views are that. You know, I'm not going to make this a political, um, but these archetypes represent the figures of the time. So, this, since the emperor could also represent the president of the United States. The 
Hierophant is a major part of your environment, but really it's school, it's the culture, and everything around you that develops your beliefs and what you, your morals, you know. Um, so like as you go through things in life, you had the, the, the magician, you know, which could be an uncle or some sort of a figure like that, that, that taught you something that your father might not teach you that seemed like magic as a kid. You know, uncles could be like that because they can, they can teach you something that, you know, it might be a little counter countercultural and, you know, in that nature. And then you have the high priestess being Mother Earth, and then you have the empress being the mother and the emperor being the father, and the, hep the if I can pronounce, the hero fant is school. It's grade school, high school, middle school, college. And then all of the cultures and things around that. It could be, in a, so to speak, it could be if you go to a, um, a religious school, or it can be church, because it's just it's the whole culture. It's the whole surroundings, the environment, that make you who are the fool traveling through this adventure, who you, part of what makes who you are, because we are affected by that part of the arcana. Um, those archetypes affect us as we're growing up, and they are part of what make us who we are. You know, if we wanted, if we wanted to deny it, and they'll say we don't like school, or maybe you do like school, but that's part of what makes you who you are. It's part of your experience and part of how you grow. So, after you've gotten done with school, you know, maybe in high school or college, you start to meet. You start to experiment with relationships, but basically, you know, school, the Hierophant comes, and then after that, it's the lovers. That's when you meet somebody else, you know, to fall in love with. Uh, this card's not really a very true representation. This tarot card deck I decided to, to get here, I chose it because it basically it has no copyrights. So that being said, you know, I didn't have any qualms about utilizing these cards and showing them on here. Uh, but this one having a succubus as the lover, you know, kind of orients it, you know, very towards one type. And it's more of like a lust and stuff like that. And I don't think that's the way it's supposed to be. It's, you know, it's some of your relationships could be full of lust, but and maybe your first relationships are. But it, the lover card really represents romantic love, not uh, lustful love. But um, this is the one I have for it. So obviously the, the lovers is, you know, your love, it's your relationships and how you deal with that. And, you know, the, the hero fent has, um, a part in making you as, as you grow and how you will interact in relationships, then the lovers is the relationships, the chariot. And the chariot is kind of the, you know, it's the thing that takes you to success. It could be your career. Um, it also represents getting out and becoming your own. Um, could could represent your vehicle. Could represent your car. There's there's no doubt about that. When you pull this card with tarot, it's kind of what speaks to you. These cards do not have a very definite meaning. When you're reading the the meanings throughout the book, as you pull each card, the one that has the most meaning to you is like when when you're reading through all these meanings. You know, the, if I say the the magician could represent a teacher, or it could represent the father, or it could represent an uncle. The minute that you, when you're listing all those off, and the minute that you say one of those, and it's like, boom, it's like a punch in the gut. You know that's the meaning that was meant for you. So when you're, if you, if you got a book with your tarot, and you'll pull a card, and you'll go through those lists of the things that the, the cards mean, and when you're reading down, if you're reading for somebody else, watch their face. Because when you read the one and you see their eyes light up or you see that look on their face, you know that's the meaning that was meant for them. And if you're giving yourself a reading, it's the same thing. You pull a card and you go through those list of meanings. And when you hit the one that means you know, that's for you, the one that gives you that punch in the gut, you know that's the one that's for you. So, But the chariot mostly is about your career and what makes you successful. Uh, it could be a little bit of the shadow side because it's where you first start to become assertive. Uh, if you've studied Carl Jung, which that's kind of where I'm eventually going to go with all these videos on the tarot, is associating Carl Jung with the tarot. And Carl Jung talks a lot about the shadow side, how you need to 
incorporate your shadow side and make it you have to use it but you have to learn how to use it right because if you use it wrong you're just you're an evil murderer or maybe you're just an asshole if you use it right though you're an assertive person and you're a successful person because if you never use your shadow side and if you're always nice then that doesn't work for you anyways because you get walked all over so it's about like slightly integrating your shadow side so the chariot can be that part of assertiveness just a little bit of integrating your shadow side strength this is all about you know you have challenges you become stronger you know some people say what doesn't kill you makes you stronger that can be arguably true or not but challenges come along in your life it comes after the chariot uh, you know there's there's gonna be challenges all the way up to that there's there's no doubt about that you're gonna have challenges in grade school in the in the hero and that type of stuff but um, the biggest challenges that somebody has to face will probably be after you've left the mother and the father because you don't have them for support anymore at all and you left school so you don't have that for support anymore so basically you know you some of some people might have their mother and father when they've gotten out of school maybe they have them for just subtle support in case they mess up but some people don't have them at all. You know, if you've lost your mother and father, or basically if you've just gotten to a point in your life where most people should be after you've gotten out of college and you're really totally on your own, and whenever you have things in life, you've got to develop your strength to keep you going. You know, that's that's what the strength represents. It's, you know, it's like pulling yourself up by your bootstraps and just taking on the world. Now we have the Hermit. Yeah, I like this deck for this because it has the Yeti uh, as the Hermit and one of my favorite mythos creatures that I sometimes like to fantasize as being real. And It's just fun to think that Bigfoot actually exists, you know, Sasquatch. And so, and you could think of, you know, Bigfoot as being one of the great Hermits. It's kind of like a man, but he's out there all by himself. And if you ever were to meet him, you know, that would be like communicating with an alien or the hermit. And the hermit could, could represent an alien. Um, but in this sense here, it's about, you know, you have the strength. And if you don't learn how to assert yourself in the world, you might want to just go off and be by yourself. You might want to be the hermit in that sense. Um, but it can also represent... The uh, hermit can also represent that time in your life when you just ask why. Why does this happen? And you get that sense of introspection where you try to go inside yourself or you try to look to the world to get your answers. The answers of why, you know, and so that, that can be a lot of with the hermit, that, that continually asking of why, that curiosity, and hopefully you can find the answers or maybe you have to do some more journey. Wheel of Fortune. Life's random. Rain falls on the just and the unjust. It's like, you know, it's just like there's a part of that life that no matter what is always random. Sometimes you have good luck, sometimes you have bad luck, and there's just certain things that are totally out of our control. That's the Wheel of Fortune. You know, go back to what, you know, Carl Jung was saying that, you know, if you don't control the subconscious, it'll control you and you call it fate. But there is still just those things that we'll never control. No matter how much we master ourselves, there's that element of random. And that's the Wheel of Fortune. Justice. Getting your just desserts. Maybe somebody else is getting their just desserts. You know, you go from random, the Wheel of Fortune, to getting exactly what you deserve. That's justice. What you deserve. If the card justice is dealt to you, you know, it could be that somebody else is going to get just desserts. That's what we always would like. But careful, it could be you getting just dessert. But, you know, justice is not always a bad thing. If you've got karma coming that's in a good way, you could be dealt some good karma. It's justice. The, the hanged man. The hanged man is really like, it's like a time of stasis nothing is really happening and it can it can be kind of boring or it can be frustrating 
the time when you're just hanging there, just waiting for something to happen. And it's like life can be hurry up and wait. And that, that can be some part of what the hangman can represent is that time in life when you're just like, hurry up and wait. And that is one of the, sometimes in life we find ourselves like continually pushing on, trying to realize that dream. And no matter what we do, over and over again, we can't realize that dream. And you find like what in life is your cross to bear. And the hangman can represent the cross you have to bear. Some people are born with, with a disability and that can be their cross to bear. You know, some people have a trauma earlier in life or later in life. You, you just like, you go to war, you have PTSD. As a child, you're abused or neglected and that sticks with you throughout your entire life. The hanged man could represent that in your life. That trauma, that one thing that sticks with you in your life that kind of seems to be maybe that piece of something that you couldn't let go of, you know, uh, maybe you got divorced and, or maybe you are going through a divorce. The hanged man can be that, that time of suspension of like, you know, it seems like the divorce can just go on and on and on. You know, that whole battle of it can just be like this never ending, you know, trial. And the hangman could really represent that because that can be a time in life when we're just continually fighting and it seems like it's never going to get to that end where the, you know, the judge signs the papers and the divorce is finally over and then you're paying, you know, child support or alimony and, you know, and you're continually, you know, or if you're on the other side of that, you're separating time with the kid and kids going through that whole thing. Um, and that could be what the hangman represents there is that, that suspension of time where it feels like, you know, if you're in the middle of a divorce, you can't start another relationship. You could, but it can be tougher. And so you have to just kind of hang out and wait for that to get finished. You can't go out and buy a house if you're in the middle of a divorce, whether you had the money to or not sometimes, because you've got to wait until all of those things have been divvied up. The hangman can represent that time in life. Um, you know, it could be just that long, treacherous working period, the daily grind. You know, you go to work every day and you're in that job that you not necessarily like, or it's just monotonous, it's just the same over and over again. Um, the hangman, you're just hung there, and you're in like a, to a trooper or whatever, you know, that just continually is the same thing. Death. This card's probably like, you know, this, of course it's like the scariest card in the deck. Nobody wants to get death dealt to them. Um, you know, if you're shoving out your your spreads and death comes up in the spread, a lot of times people can just, you know, think it's something horrible. And it could be. There's there's no doubt about it that the death could be something frightening. But it's interesting that it comes after the hanged man. Because what death really represents is change. It's the door slamming shut on something else and a new door opening. And that can be scary, but it can also be like a huge relief. Um, you know, I was mentioning before how there was divorce, you know, death could be that ending and that new change and that's going to be the new you. So death's not always scary. Um, it could be a change. It really just represents death to the old you and there's going to be a new you. Um, you know, saying goodbye to old things, maybe you need to quit smoking or some other bad habit. Death can represent the death of the you that, that smoked. Um, could be many things like that. And so it's kind of important that when the death card is pulled, you take a moment of, you know, a meditation and you try to figure out, okay, what, what do I need to say goodbye to? And you prepare yourself for that and you say goodbye and you move on. You become the new you. Temperance. You would hope after all of the fool it has been through that by now he has learned some patience. And that's where temperance comes in. It's about patience. If temperance is um, drawn for you, then that means that you might need to learn some patience and you might need to utilize, because you, as, a, as the fool, you've gone through all of these points in your journey and you finally made it to here, and now it's time to use that patience that you've learned. Temperance is also health. 
think um, a card of Temperance coming out upside down might be you would have some trials in health. But yeah, Temperance can also represent good health, or it can just be something about your health. The Devil. Devil, you know, it very well could represent evil, but definitely it's not necessarily that card's only thing that it represents. Carl Jung talks about, you know, the, the devil and his archetypes, and the devil doesn't necessarily exist as an evil being or an evil entity outside of you. It exists inside of you. It can be that shadow side that you have not matured in how to control. So it could be what makes you, you know, if you have so much jealousy or rage that you just kill somebody, as opposed to using your shadow side to speak up and say, this is what I need. So Carl Jung says that if you don't learn to control the subconscious, it will control you and you will call it fate. And so much of our lives can be just an autopilot decision. 90% of our life or maybe 80% of our life is just nothing but decisions that are made by our subconscious. If we don't get in there to learn to control them, then it's just going to continually make those decisions for us. The devil can be that, that being in your mind that just, you know, it's the one that makes you think, do things you don't want to do. You know, people talk about hell not existing or hell existing and it being that eternal lake of fire. No, it's going to be that place in real life that you've gotten to because you've let that devil within you control you over and over again. It's always making the decisions. It's that heroin addiction. It's, it can even, it's the alcohol addiction. It's the job that you hate, that you go to all the time because you never learn to control your shadow side to develop and get out of it. And the devil represents those types of things. They seem evil. They seem like hell. You know, if you're going through hell, you got to go strong. you got to summon your strength to, to conquer the devil. And it's the same thing in the tarot cards. The devil card is drawn up. You need to stop and look into your life and, and see what feels like hell to you. And summon your strength and fight it. The tower. So we just had the devil, and after all of this that the fool has been through, that career, things that have made him strong, the tower can represent like all that you've built. If you've got your house, and you've got your fancy car, and you have the material things, because you don't want to say it's the family or it's your friends. Um, those things are things that you've built, but those aren't, those really, unless, because there's a flip side of the tower, that it can represent all of those things imprisoning you. And so, the tower could be a prison. Now, it can, a prison can be a place of security. So, it might not necessarily seem like a prison, but if all of your material possessions, they, you own them, but they also own you constantly worry about somebody damaging them or stealing them and the tower represents all of those things and if as a human being we could find a way to break out of that prison that's like the ultimate in life not being attached to all of your material possessions because you can't take any of it with you that's what they say you know pharaohs or whatever were buried with all these things in their coffins but when it really comes down to it you come into this world naked, and you're going to go out of it naked. And you come into it naked and covered with blood, and you might go out of it naked and covered with blood. And maybe that's, you know, it's brutal. But the tower represents everything that you've built up to this point. All your material possessions are within the tower. Some... 15, 14.5 billion years ago, we had the Big Bang. The entire universe was created in hundreds of billions of stars. All these stars. And, you know, like the great Carl Sagan, Neil deGrasse Tyson, 
say we are we are stars we are dead stars we are exploded stars we are the creation of stars everything in this universe gold helium it's all created by stars so the star is the creation uh, it is the hope and it's kind of like you know you look up in the sky and you see the stars it's that feeling right there what do you get there's no other feeling like it uh, if you live in the city all the time and you are constantly just overwhelmed with this light pollution you get out there in the country in the middle of nowhere you look in the sky and you see that backbone of Milky Way galaxy just you know just like a line across the sky it's beautiful it's breathtaking that's the star the moon in our world, you know, like the real arcana, the archetype of, like, now, the moon represents, I think it represents dreams, you know, it could be the dream world. Um, it shows a werewolf in this card, you know, like the, the moon is like lycanthropy, what makes you crazy. Uh, and, and that could be, you know, it's definitely, if that's what's speaking to you when this card is dealt, there's a little bit of craziness, a mental illness, or something like that, then maybe that's what it means to you. Um, it could be a calmness. It's also like an illusion. There's a lot of illusions we have in life, like a lot of facades, um, something that is not what it seems in this world. You can go through this world and you can project an illusion you know, through your entire life, or maybe a great part of your life, it's that, you know, you're, you're five different selves, you're a different self at work, you're a different self at home, you're somebody different to your wife than you are to your buddies at the bar. The moon is like the illusion that you're projecting all of the time, that part that's not really you. you know, there's the you that is you when you're like totally by yourself, or when you're best with your best friend. Now, hopefully, that best friend is your lover, and you can be who you really are when you're with that person, but it's not always true for all of us. Some of us have to constantly put on this facade when we're with the person who's become our lover, you know, and that could be a that could be a terrible place to be in life where you can't be yourself around that person. Um, and that could be what the moon can represent is that veil that you cover yourself with, the mask that you wear. And so, you know, maybe when you see the moon come out, when the moon is dealt to you. Take a moment of peace and calm, meditate on it, and realize the masks you wear. And do you need to strip them, or do you need to strengthen them? How's it speaking to you right then? The sun. It's clarity. It's the reason why I brought that card in out of focus and then just suddenly sharpened the focus. Because the sun is that. Uh, you know, we said the moon was your masks, that facade that you wear uh, could represent a mental, mental illness could represent what makes you crazy but it was also that place that you could never be yourself the sun is clarity stripping you off all the masks uh, it shows a phoenix here uh, you know but it's that heat that comes out if your mask is made of plastic or maybe it's made of wax but the sun comes out and it burns it off and it's you're crystal clear it's that time when your mind is crystal clear. If, you know, like me, suffer from ADHD, or maybe it's not a suffer, but, you know, I have ADHD in life. And there are certain times in life when all of a sudden the mind just goes clear. And it's like you're focused and nothing else. You, you think, and it's like a superpower, it's like a super moment, because before that point you never thought this clear before. That's the sun. Suddenly everything is clear. No interference. You're not thinking about anything else but that one thing. This could be the zone. Getting in the zone. Some people talk about that. Like where you're um, an artist. And you're painting a picture. And all of a sudden. Or you're a writer. And you're writing a story. And all of a sudden that moment has come to you. Where you know where the story is going. And you're typing away. Or you're painting away. Or you're a photographer. It's just that moment of clarity. And, you know, that's the sun. Things are blurry, and then all of a sudden, they're in focus. It's the sun. Moment of clarity. Judgment. 
justice. You know, if it's not our own justice, we hope for somebody else to get justice. There's no doubt about that, but... So we just had the moon, which was uh, the mask. And then we had the sun, which was stripping off that mask. Becoming clarity. It's like, first of all, when that mask is stripped off and you're yourself, although there's that moment of clarity, it, it can be a little bit, you know, disturbing, it's different, but when judgment and justice finally comes in, you're like, you're learning to live with that. And it's like, if there's no better... You know, you finally can be yourself in this world. Um, and maybe that would be, maybe you can be yourself because somebody else has gotten justice. But, you know, more so it's like, you can be yourself because you've just, you've gone through all this stuff. And now you're able to be yourself. And that's, you know, where judgment can be. Uh, like that world you know, hopefully the the fool after all that he's learned after all he's been through you know he's ready for the world um fortunately you know we're all going to be in the world before we get all of these lessons but you know, it's everything it's the world it's the universe heaven hell what well, so everything that's in between We've got infinity you know a snake biting its own tail here there's no doubt, it's just like everything that can be encompassed here. Uh, that's the world. And by the time you get to the world and the fuel's journey, you've gone through everything. And that's, it's, it's representing all of that. You know, it's the mother, the father, the devil, death. Everything is all wrapped up in this one card. The world. The moon, the sun, it's all there. 